Naples suffered heavy casualties supporting Spain during the Franco-Spanish War. Paying ruinous taxation to the Spanish was now destroying the Neapolitan economy. Having already run out of money and loans, the Kingdom of Naples was now forced to sell state assets and titles. The city was the centre of the Baroque era, hosting artists including Caravaggio and Bernini, philosophers and writers including Giambattista Marino. The population halved in 1656 due to an outbreak of the bubonic plague. After the War of Spanish Succession, the Treaty of Rastatt in 1714 passed Naples to Charles VI, the Austrian Holy Roman Emperor. Naples and Sicily fell to a Spanish army during the War of Polish Succession in 1734. Charles, Duke of Parma of the French House of Bourbon, became King of Naples and Sicily in 1735. As Charles VII of Naples became King of Spain in 1759, Naples passed to Ferdinand IV. Horatio Nelson landed in the city in 1798 to warn the locals of the danger posed by the French Republicans. Naturally, Ferdinand IV, the Bourbon king, opposed the French Revolution and Napoleon. During the War of the Second Coalition, Ferdinand I of Naples fled the oncoming French troops from Naples and retreated to Palermo, Sicily, protected by the British ship HMS Vanguard in 1798. Ferdinand was allowed to return, but was forced to make concessions to the French in the Treaty of Florence in 1801. To learn more about La Bella Italia, consider subscribing. Ferdinand joined the Third Coalition, including Britain, the Holy Roman Emperor, the Russian Empire, Sicily and Sweden, to fight Napoleon in 1805. Napoleon won crushing victories and appointed his brother Joseph as the hereditary King of Naples. Joseph was soon replaced by Napoleon's sister Caroline and his brother-in-law, the unreliable Joachim Murat. Kings Joseph and Joachim Murat introduced new laws as the power of the nobles and the clerics were on the wane. Meanwhile, bandits roamed countryside unchecked and the general population clamoured for land reform. Upon Napoleon's defeat in 1813, Murat switched sides and agreed with Austria in order to keep his throne of Naples. This infuriated Ferdinand. Murat's hold on Naples was fragile, as he was opposed by most of the local powers, particularly Britain, and relied solely on the wavering support of Austria. As Napoleon returned to France in 1815 for the Hundred Days' War, Murat changed sides again to ally with Napoleon. Fearing the Austrians' support ebbing away, Murat declared war on Austria and made the Rimini Proclamation in 1815, calling on Italian nationalists to rise up against Austria. Of course, he did this hoping to secure his position. The Congress of Vienna was agreed as a consequence of the French Revolution and the downfall of Napoleon. It was signed in 1815 and saw Naples as the capital of the Kingdom of Two Sicilies and Ferdinand returned. The Neapolitan War continued between Murat and the Austrians and it ended with a crushing victory at the Battle of Tolentino for the Austrian troops. Murat was subsequently captured and executed in Pizzo, Calabria. The Kingdom of Naples and the Kingdom of Sicily were joined into the new Kingdom of Two Sicilies in 1816. The price for Ferdinand's crown was that the Congress of Vienna also granted the rights 
to post troops in the kingdom. Furthermore, Austria, Russia and Prussia insisted that no written constitution was to be passed in the kingdom. Any form of dissent was swiftly crushed. The Carbonari, a political activist group from the earlier French occupation, nonetheless plotted unrest. In 1820, a revolt led by the Carbonari demanded a written constitution. Under duress, King Ferdinand granted this request. Neapolitan rebels unwisely went on to occupy Benevento and Ponte Codvo, property owned by the Pope. The Holy Alliance of Austria, Russia and Prussia had seen enough. In 1821, Austrian forces occupied the city of Naples. Backed by 50,000 Austrian troops, King Ferdinand ripped up the new constitution. The local resistance led by General Guglielmo Pepe and the Carbonari was swiftly put down and any dissent crushed. And the administration in Naples was completely corrupt. A further coup was suppressed in 1828. King Ferdinand II began as a reformer, trying to improve the life of the everyday citizens. Naples now had street lighting and a railway, the Naples Potici Railway. However, unrest continued across the countryside. King Ferdinand relied on the Swiss Guard to quell a revolution in Naples, but other areas were slow to submit. By 1849, King Ferdinand II was solely focused on keeping hold of power. Having visited Naples in 1850, the British politician Gladstone added his support for the Neapolitan opponents of the Bourbon rulers. Gladstone's words provoked a strong reaction across Europe as to how bad the living conditions were in southern Italy. The Neapolitan thirst for revolution wanted a change of administration and absolutely did not want a unification of Italy as was to transpire. Only with the defeat of Austria in 1859 and the unification of most of the north of Italy in 1860 did the inspirational leader Giuseppe Garibaldi lead the 10,000 red shirts south for Sicily egged on by the politician Cavour. Liberating Sicily, Garibaldi crossed into southern Italy and won the Battle of Volturno. King Francis II made his last stand at the Siege of Gaeta. He surrendered and abdicated in 1861. So ended the Bourbon rule. Garibaldi met King Vittorio Emanuele at Teano and transferred to him the two Sicilies, including Naples. The Kingdom of Italy was born and ruled by Piedmont, a region in northern Italy. The city was struck by numerous epidemics of cholera and typhoid fever between 1834 and 1884. The economy of Naples collapsed and millions emigrated between 1876 and 1913. Many people headed to the New World, the Americas. Benito Mussolini, the fascist dictator of Italy, invested heavily in the city infrastructure of Naples. Naples was devastated by bombing during World War II. British and American troops liberated Naples in 1943. Allied attempts to bring supplies for the starving in Naples caused a raging black market due to organised crime. High unemployment continued to ravage after the war. Heavy government investment between 1950 and 1984 renovated some of the city landmarks, but waste disposal continued to be a problem due to interference from local organised crime groups such as the Camorra. Environmental contamination and health risks are now common in the area due to long-term illegal waste disposal. At times it's earned the area the nickname of Land on Fire. 
the writer Roberto Saviano has written extensively about the organised crime and the illegal waste disposal in the area. He lives under, under police protection due to death threats from the Camorra. Italians famously argue about the merits of Italian regional cuisine. Naples cuisine is highly prized across Italy. The coffee is generally accepted to be the best in Italy due to the water. The legend of the Margarita pizza is that it was named for the visit of Queen Margarita of Savoy in 1889, using ingredients the same colour as the national flag. Naples has a number of notable sites of interest. Lungomare Caracciolo is a scenic seafront where you can enjoy the views over the Bay of Naples and Vesuvius. Castel dell'Ovo, the famous castle on its own island. The Roman ruins at Pompeii. Teatro di San Carlo, the oldest working theatre in Europe. The Palace of Caserta, the Royal Palace, and now you know the history behind it. The historic centre of Naples is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The artist Caravaggio at times lived in Naples and his work would inspire the Baroque culture for which the city is rightly famous for. During the Baroque period, opera buffa, a style of opera, was developed, which was later adopted by Rossini and Mozart. The earliest six-string guitar, as well as the mandolin, was created in Naples. The most famous opera tenor of all time, Enrico Caruso, came from a poor part of Naples. A legacy of the Kingdom of Two Sicilies is the traditional dance and music of the Tantella. Canzone Napoletane, traditional style Neapolitan music, is extremely popular across all of Italy. A recent famous Neapolitan singer and musician is Pino Daniele. The most famous son of Naples is Totò and he made a string of movies in Italian. The recent movie and TV series Gomorra is based on the work of Roberto Saviano. Naples was also used as a backdrop in the TV series The Sopranos. Napoli's football team renamed its stadium in honour of Diego Maradona, an Argentinian player who played for them in their golden era. Maradona is one of the two top football players of all time along with Pelé. Maradona caused a scandal in 1990 World Cup when Italy was due to play Argentina, Maradona's team, in Naples. Maradona claimed that all true Neapolitans would support Argentina because of him, but he is still revered across Naples.